We catch fish in many different ways. Most of the fish in the supermarket come from commercial fisheries who use nets, lines, pots, and traps to catch fish and shellfish. People also fish according to traditional practice and recreationally, for fun and for food. Commercial fishing is the only way to meet the world's demand for seafood at this time. In 2017 to 18, Australian seafood consumption was an average of 13.7 kilograms per person per year. Fisheries also provide jobs. About 60 million people worldwide are employed in fisheries or aquaculture. Aquaculture is breeding, raising, and farming fish, shellfish, and plants for human consumption. Commercial fishing meets half the world's demand for seafood, and the other half is met by aquaculture. Aquaculture helps by selling supermarkets a constant supply of healthy species of a similar size. Global aquaculture production is five times greater than it was in 1990. The most commonly farmed species are usually salmon, oysters, barramundi, prawns, abalone, and yellowtail kingfish. Customary, traditional, or cultural fishing is when individuals or communities fish for subsistence and to maintain their connection to cultural practice. This includes spearfishing, hand fishing, and even whaling. The importance of indigenous customary fishing was officially recognized in 2003. A survey conducted just prior to this found that 92% of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples living in Northern Australia fish for subsistence at least once throughout the year. That's an estimated 420,000 fishing days. There are over 5,000 known native fish species in Australian waters. Many are protected, like stingrays, seahorses, and nurse sharks. Some species are protected by gender. You can't catch the females as they carry the eggs. Totally protected species include many sharks, as well as sea lions and all seabirds, dolphins, seals, and marine turtles. Artists with the Arab Art Center on Arab Island in the Torres Strait created these ghost net sculptures called Al Karam Ira Lemar Lu. These artists use their practice to draw attention to the harm that discarded fishing nets, called ghost nets, can cause for sea life who become entangled or otherwise harmed. Many commercial fisheries are committed to sustainable fishing, which essentially means that they only fish the stocks that are assessed as being at a sustainable level. But how do they know? Well, the Mufti 2 here is one of my favorite objects in the Maritime Museum's collection. Not only is it a beautiful giant goldfish shape, it has an important history. Blue Grenadier and Orange Ruffy are both deep water species found below 300 to 700 meters. People were having trouble estimating exactly how many fish were down there. So the CSIRO designed and developed this towed acoustic body to dive down and find out. This information is provided to fisheries who help set catch limits for species based on real data. People also farm other marine resources. The global seaweed industry is worth around 8 billion Australian dollars per year. And some researchers are looking into marine algae as a future food source for humans. In addition to stock assessment, ecosystem impacts and efficient fisheries management are the other core principles of sustainable futures for fisheries. One of the easiest things to do is to check your seafood at the supermarket for the sustainable seafood blue fish logo or the farmed responsibly green fish logo on the package. You can also check out online sustainable seafood guides so that you can choose the best fish when you go out to eat. And when fishing recreationally, make sure you read the signs on the wharf so that you catch and release any species that are in danger.